I just want to share something with you and then in line with what you have thought, then we'll pray. Light is in levels and light is in intensity. When God brings you to light, there is something he has handed over to you. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. When you shut, no man can open. When you open, no man can shut. Now, there are men that have keys. When they shut, nobody can open. When they open, no man can shut. Now, I want you to understand that in the realms of God, those keys are light. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. When you shut, no man will open. When you open, no man can what? There was something he said and I love. He said, don't argue with men when you don't know where they are walking from. When you don't know from which realm they exist. There are men that can shut your life. They have, yes, they are flesh and blood like you. But they can shut your life positively, spiritually. Positively, negatively. There are still men that can open your life. That is why there are people that just an encounter with them. God bless you. Your life has changed. Now, in the realm of the spirit, God gives men these keys as light. I'm saying this because there was something the Lord shared with me. And he did, he's not permitting me to share with anybody. But I'm going to share a little. Then if you go home, if he wants you to come into it, you will come into it. Let me tell you something. When God gives you certain keys and you share it out, he will not share with some things, some things with you again. Hear this. What you call revelation, to you is revelation. But to us, is what we used to work. When you see me stand here and talk to people and their life change, there is something I'm using to work. And it's my key. You're the one seeing it as revelation. But that means not revelation, it is power. The, oh, this guy is deep. Deep what? What are we doing with deep? That thing is power. In the realm of the spirit, what you believe is what you work with. Are you with me? I'm telling you. So, there are some things God will give you, he will not permit you to share. And if you, if you, if you insist and share, you've handed an immature man a key that may destroy him. And the Holy Ghost will not share deep things with you again. There was something he shared with me yesterday night while I was praying. And he's not permitting me to share, at least for now. But I'm going to say some things around it. And trust him that whosoever he wants to bring into that same light, he will bring. And I know some of you will catch it. Shout that amen. amen. Now, why do we pray? Why do we pray? Because if you are a student of the Bible and you understand scriptures very well, there is a level you will get to. I'm telling you the truth. You may argue, but it's the truth. You will find it difficult to pray. You will not understand. Don't argue. Because you have all. You have everything. Are you with me? I was talking to my friend, my brother, and I told him, I said, there's a level you get to, and sometimes even prayer becomes becomes hard not because you are lazy not because you can't pray what are you praying for what are you praying for someone like me now what am i praying for it's true i don't have everything i need but i know that there are certain things when i call them for they will come now i'm permitted to call some, some things now and i'm not permitted to call some things now and i'll show you in just a few minutes are you with me now when you get to this level what you need to pray is not a man that will ginger you what you need to pray is not a man that will motivate you. What you need to pray is light. It got to a point in my life, I began to listen to all the men of God I know about prayer. Everybody, I didn't find anything. They were saying what I knew. You don't understand. Nobody was saying everything they are saying. As you are talking, I know where you are going. So, there is a level you get to. It is no longer motivation that will bring you into prayer. You will begin to pray because you know what prayer is meant for. You don't know, you no longer need people to ginger you that you pray. I'll tell you just, just one of them and then you pray with it. Prayer is not just asking God for things. Prayer is communion. Follow me. Prayer is what? Now, the Bible says something. It says, Jesus seated at the right hand of God. Make it what? 
intercession for us. So, even at the right hand of God, he's praying. He's what? Now, please, listen to me. You are seated here, and I'm seated here. And yet, I'm still praying just to talk to you. So, what it means is that talking to God is not possible except by prayer. Relationship with God is not possible except by prayer. Communion is not possible. It's not a matter of proximity. Oh, God. It's not that he's in me, I'm in him, we are now one. You, oh, dear Lord. Is a protocol. You can't communicate with God except by prayer. You can't share fellowship with God except by prayer. It's not as though you are a one man in a far place trying to reach a God that is far. It's a protocol. You know, some, some of you pray because you are trying to reach out to one God that is somewhere. And then when you now come to light that you are now one with God, you find it difficult to pray because you have now come. So you don't know what else to pray for. So we don't just pray because we want you to hear us. We, we pray because we are now one with him. So if you must commune with God, it is by prayer. Now let me share this with you. I think I'm permitted to share this because they are important. Now when you pray with God, when you pray to God, I know why I said pray with God. Let me not use those terms. You don't understand. Hi. When you pray with God, don't, I'm, I'm touching something that I should not touch. Do you know why the church is called the bride of Christ? Uh, do you know why? Because you are, you, are, you are his wife. Please, get this and never forget. Anything God created in the physical eh, speaks of a spiritual truth. From the things that we see, we can understand and know the things we can't see. For example, you look at water. There is no better way to explain the Trinity than water. Water is water in liquid, in gaseous, in solid form. But different properties. But that, am, am I communicating now? There is no better way to explain the Trinity. So you understand the invisible things from those things that are seen. It's in scriptures. And there's a level where you get to, you can only now begin to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. But it's a higher level. But before that, you will understand spiritual things from those things which are seen. Are you with me now? Now, when the Bible was speaking about marriage, it said, For this reason shall a man leave his father and mother and be cling to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. He says, this is talking about Christ and the church. Now, when you understand the clinging of a man to his wife to become one flesh, what do they do when they get married? When they get married, there is something they do, not in the parlor. They do it in the room. It's called intimacy. That is what makes the husband and wife bond. And the wife cannot be productive except by that union. Your prosperity is tied to intimacy. You can be a Christian and yet barren. Barren. Financially barren. Spiritually barren. You don't understand. There is something husband and wife do in the market. There's another thing they do in the room. That one is between them. Am I communicating here? Now that is the reason. Hear this. Why you will see a woman, she will come and her stomach will be big you will know that something has happened you don't need a prophet to ask has something happened so when i see your life dry you are begging for food begging for transport you are a believer you are a child of god yet i know there is something that is lacking so it's a shame for a man that knows god to complain is poor so prayer basically is for fellowship it's for what is for what so when when god meets god and god needs to fellowship with god it's done by prayer this is where this is where you are not praying for you are not you're you not praying for bon vita you're not praying for milk now have you wondered why men will lock themselves for five days they will leave church on saturday only to come out on friday again what are they praying for they're not praying for car koinonia 
intimacy having said that having said that let me now say what i wanted to say hear this when this bonding happens are you with me when this what when this bonding happens there is something that happens john chapter 5 verse 19 then answered jesus and said unto them hear this keep it look verily verily i say unto you the son who is the son jesus right are you a son too are you a son too now the son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the father do for what things soever he doeth these also doeth the son likewise hear this the son can do nothing of himself except that which he will see it the father do now how do i say this thing without saying what i was asked not to say listen now hear this hear this hear this you if you like pray from now to your next year eh? you will not understand results you will not have manifestations until you understand that God is not interested in your will, only his will. Your will, your desire, there's a place to that. But your will is useless even when it is not in alignment with his will. So even for your desires, which the scripture has promised for, to be fulfilled, it must be in alignment with his own will. So if you don't know the will of the Father, your prayer is a waste. I'm talking about the prayer of supplication now. The prayer of supplication now. Your prayer is a waste. So what do we do in prayer? We pray so that we can pray. My God. <laughs> we don't just wake up to pray. We pray to pray. We pray to receive prayer points to pray. We don't just wake up. Baratakapaya. We wait till we have what to pray for. That's why a man will just come out. He will say, Lazarus, come forth. It's not the Lazarus come forth that brought that guy out. It's not the Lazarus come forth that brought him out. I'll show you something very quickly. First John chapter 5, verse 14. I pray the Lord brings you into this light. And this is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that he hears us whatever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. Please look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, your prayer is going to be answered only when your prayer is in line with the will of god so man of god how why is it that some people enjoy effortless manifestation and some people would pray for years and yet no result now when the bible says the holy ghost spread from within us with deep groanings that cannot be uttered understand let me tell you the truth there are some prayers that if you pray from now till tomorrow in tongues nothing will happen because when you pray in tongues you generate power but with your words you give direction to power have you wondered why god said to moses stretch your rod now stretching of the rod means the power is there but with the stretching of the rod you give direction to power so if you speak in tongues from now till next year, there are still certain utterances that need to be made for conditions to change. Now you can't know those things except they are reviewed by the Holy Ghost. And that's why sometimes you can just finish praying and all you have is one word, it is well. You finish praying and all you have is one word, it is settled. No, you think it is settled. There is something that happened before it is settled, came out. Hear this. We pray so that we can pray. 
we pray to receive prayer points to pray. And that is what differentiates prayer that is made out of the flesh and prayer born of the spirit. Hear this. Hear this. Even the son cannot do anything except that which he sees the father do. So when we pray, two things happen. Number one, we know the will of God from the word. But in prayer, the present tense will of God is made available to us. As you begin to pray, what God desires as touching that matter at that time is revealed. That is why I told you that there are some things we can call forth now, but we don't have the permission to call forth. We wait for the time. That's how to put power under control. If you abuse it, it will be taken from you. So, we stay in prayer until we see. Okay, now let's read John 5, 19. It will make sense now. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Look at this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself. Sir, are you a son? You can do nothing of yourself until you see. That's where they say I should not talk about. But whatsoever he see the father do. That's why I told you that there are going to be dangerous healings here. For whatsoever he see the father do, whatsoever he do, it, this also the son likewise. So we pray until we see. When we see, it is done. How can you raise a dead man with just one word? Lazarus, come forth. Hear this. Hear this. Oh God. So, we stay in prayer. We stay in prayer until you can now begin to see the things that God has prepared for you. And if you don't see it, you don't have a prayer point yet. So even Jesus had to wait till he saw. Even Jesus had to what? Till he what? So when he sees what the father has done, when he sees what his father has done, then he replicates it on the earth. No wonder Matthew chapter 6 verse 10 it says thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven so you must first trap it from zion now if you want to also think the law of faith remember that nothing can ever exist except that which is already existing so that reality has already you are not trying to pray something it has already been created. You take from there, you manifest it here. That's why he did not say Lazarus rise. He said Lazarus come forth. In other words, the man was alive somewhere. Okay. My God. I'm already entering something. The I should not enter. <laughs> see, 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 miracles will break out here. Miracles will break out. In, in the next three Saturdays, you will see strange things. Did you ever? How can you go to a dead man's grave and say, Come forth? In other words, oh God, you have been raised. Oh yeah, just come, just come. I'm going to something that I should not say. You want to pray now? Just go ahead and pray. Pray until you see. Pray until you see. I can't go beyond here. I can't go beyond here. I can't go beyond here. Shagalaba Hayadabaha.